Dr. Deflo. Hello, my name is Dr. D. Flo, and I want to welcome you to my Bluetooth black box tutorial. I could control my addressable LEDs from my computer, but when I was entertaining friends, turning my back to the room to type on my computer was not cool. I also wanted a simple and tactile way for my guests to play with the LEDs. Yes, I could have used a tablet, but that would be a boring video, and nothing is more satisfying than pressing a cold, glowing aluminum button and watching the entire room change colors. So let's get this tutorial started. First, you will need a box. I 3D printed my box, but any prefabricated box is fine as long as you can drill into it. The Autodesk Inventor and STL files for my box are available on my website, www.drdflow.com forward slash the black box. You will also find all of my tools and supplies on my website with their prices and retailers. The brains of the box is an Arduino Mega. I needed more digital pins than the Arduino Uno could offer. Be careful of clones and imposters of the Arduino Mega. These are normally sold significantly below the usual $50 price of a Mega. I wanted to be able to upload code and charge the box without opening it, so I am installing a USB Type-B panel mount. This will just be press fitted in. Next I 3D printed a little sleigh with standoffs to hold the Arduino Mega. The sleigh slides into the box on the trapezoid rails. This allows me to easily pull the Arduino out of the box, but it will not be rattling around when in the box. Now I'm going to install the switches, but you need to purchase yours. I purchased mine on frozencpu.com because I had used these for a previous computer build and they were very high quality. Momentary switches are push buttons that complete the circuit whenever the button is held down. Latching switches complete the circuit after the button is pressed down and then need to be pressed again to end the connection. I purchased four momentary switches, four latching switches, four rockers, and four military switches. The large white button I purchased from Adafruit. I had a small lapse of judgment when purchasing these switches. I had planned to power the box with a 5 volt rechargeable LiPo battery. 5 volts is perfect for powering the Arduino Mega. However, what I failed to realize was that these switches had 12 volt LEDs. I got this to work, but my battery runs out quicker than if they were 5 volt LEDs. If you want to save money and time, I will list some switches with 5 volt LEDs on my website. If you are using a prefabricated box or want to use different switches, then you need to drill or change the whole diameter. If we go down to specifications, you can see thread diameter and face diameter. You want your hole to be between these two sizes, so I would use a 20 millimeter hole or bit for this. I realized that one of my switches was blocking the slot for my battery, so I removed the switch and slid the 6.6 .6 amp, 3.7 volt rechargeable battery into its slot. Replacing the switch keeps the battery from coming out of the top. Now it is time to wire all 17 buttons. Each button needs a 12 volt and ground for the LED and a 5 volt and data wire for the Arduino to receive the signal when a button is pressed. 
these 68 wires create the bulk of the wire nest. So how does a button work? When a button is pressed, it completes a circuit by connecting the ends of two wires. An Arduino can be programmed to react to 5 volts. So you press a button connecting an Arduino pin in 5 volts, the Arduino will sense the 5 volts and do some action. Unfortunately, it is slightly more difficult than just simply connecting the 5 volt to the Arduino data pin. When the button is unpressed and the circuit is disrupted, you would think that the Arduino would stop reacting to the 5 volts. However, there is residual 5 volts that will take time to dissipate, causing the Arduino to continually react even after the button has broken the circuit. This can cause unpredictable behavior. We need to get rid of this residual 5 volts by pulling it down to ground. Therefore, we're going to introduce a pull-down resistor, which is a resistor, then a connection to ground. This problem can also be solved through an internal pull-up resistor on the Arduino. However, the pull-down method is easier for me to demonstrate. I have 17 buttons, so I need 17 pull-down resistors, which would create a lot of extra wiring. So I'm going to use a protoboard to keep things a little more clean. This first male pin on the protoboard is the 5 volt supply. This single pin is connected to the entire next column through bridging the holes with solder. You can already see how this protoboard is saving us a bunch of wiring because I would have to take one wire and splice it into 17 5 volt wires. This column that is now receiving 5 volts will supply the input 5 volts to each of the 17 buttons. It is imperative that this 5 volt column does not touch the adjacent column because this will be the output of the button. So when the button is pressed, the 5 volts will flow to this next column. The last major column of pins will be the interface for the wires to go back to the Arduino. These two columns are connected row-wise, so they receive the 5 volt signal when only one button is pressed. If you bridge pins within this column, it will result in missignaling. Next, we have the pole down resistor to ground, which again are connected row-wise. And these resistors are all connected to the same ground pin through again bridging the holes with solder. If confused, please rewatch the schematic on how a button works. This is really just upscaling that. Now we need to connect the pins on our protoboard to the buttons. The military and rocker switches are simple on and off switches, so you just connect a pin from the first column to the terminal below the positive marking and a pin from the second column to the terminal underneath the marking to the right. We will connect a ground from one of the far left columns to the top terminal. The momentary and latching switches are different. On the back of the buttons, you will see NC, NO, and C. There are two configurations for connecting the 5 volts and data to this button. The first configuration is normally open, so you would connect the data wire to the C or common and the 5 volts to the NO. Normally open means the switch will function like a stereotypical button, so when the button is pressed, the circuit will be completed and will be disrupted when the button is not pressed. The second configuration is normally closed, so you would connect the data wire to C or common and the 5 volts to NC. Normally closed is the opposite. When the button is untouched, the circuit is completed, but when the button is pressed, the circuit is disrupted. I recommend using the normally open configuration so that the button functions as you would expect, but the code will allow for either configuration. Solder or use the provided wire harness to attach a wire to the button, and on the other end of that wire, add a female connector using a Molex crimp tool to attach the wire to the protoboard. I stuck the protoboard next to the Arduino with Velcro tape. Ignore the red wire on the protoboard. At this point, I still thought the LEDs in the buttons would be bright enough at 5 volts, but I was delusional. 
Next video, I will show you how to set up the battery to supply 5 and 12 volts. I will also go over the Bluetooth module and connecting the protoboard to the Arduino. I hope this project has given you some cool ideas. Thanks for watching. for more Dr. D-Flow.